when you look at what Paul says about prayer, and if you just search Paul's writings for the word pray or prayer, there are only five passages that I could find, and you, if you want to do some more research and find more, you're welcome to, five passages that I would call imperatives, commands, about our prayer. So there's only five things where Paul tells us to pray, and then with that he's telling us how to pray. So I want to look at those five passages of Scripture and really boil down what Paul is writing about prayer in some very uh, concrete ways. I want to define three words, really identify three key words for prayer that we find in Paul's instructions that I believe will be very, very helpful to us that we can then keep in mind. In other words, what should our prayer life look like? And I think we can boil it down to three key concepts, three key words, that if we keep that in our mind, that it will help us look at what our prayer life should be. Uh, Lord willing, as we get into our adult Sunday school right now, most of the classes or some of the classes are teaching through Proverbs, a book on Proverbs. They'll be done with that, Lord willing, at the end of January. And we're going to be looking at a series on prayer after that. And particularly, we're going to be looking at the model prayer, the disciples' prayer, and how that should drive how we pray. When we should pray, Christ said, pray, Lord, thy will be done, thy kingdom come. What does that mean? How does that look like? So uh, prayer will be a continuing focus of our ministry here. But I want to look at look at some of the commands and really boil down again the three words that fall out of these commands. The first passage I want to look at is in Romans 12, 12. We've looked at this passage in the past. And right at the end of that, he says, continuing instant in prayer, continuing instant in prayer. What do you think of when you think of the word instant? What comes to mind? Right now, can anyone think of instant oatmeal? Instant oatmeal, instant coffee, some, the microwave. I mean, we're an instant society, aren't we? It's something right now, and it's done, and it's hot, and I get my cereal, and I'm off. Okay, That's not what this word means. It means constant, devoted, something that you give steadfast attention to, something... It means to give unremitting care to a thing, to be faithful in. I was like, what kind of illustration can I think of? Those of you that have had newborn babies, or those of you that have been around newborn babies, or those of us that can barely remember newborn babies, this word's a good description of a newborn. Constant, attentive care. Think about it. That, that little child does nothing for themselves. Everything has to be done. You're constantly, and the kid makes a peep and boop, you're in there and taking care of whatever the need is. Constant, ongoing, attentive care. And that is the idea here that we're to be instant in prayer or continually in prayer. Something we're giving constant attention to. And so the word that I'm going to call this, this particular aspect of prayer is constant. Something that I am steadfastly devoted to. What does that say about our lives then? I mean, that means that prayer is not just a five-minute exercise I do in my morning devotions or as I wrap up my morning devotions and I'm taking down my last little bit of coffee, rushing upstairs, you know, to get some clothes on and get out the door, that's when I'm praying. That doesn't work with what Paul is saying here. It's something that you're constantly devoted to. The second passage, second imperative is in Ephesians chapter 6. If you want to turn over there, Ephesians 6. And really, in this passage, we have uh, almost a repeat of what Paul has just told us, because he has the same idea, actually uses a similar word. Um, in this text is the word we saw in Romans 12.12. 12. But he adds some additional information, Ephesians 6.18. And this is right at the end of the section of Scripture where Paul has told us to put on the whole armor of God. He told us to put on a breastplate, a helmet, a sword... Uh, shod your feet in a certain way, and so on. In verse 18, he says, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for the saints. So he starts out by saying, Praying always. In other words, every time we pray, it should have a particular character. And then he goes on to tell us what that character is. He said it should be prayer. So you're praying always with prayer. He said, Well, what? That's kind of like doesn't make sense. Well, when we talk about prayer in the New Testament, it's the idea of expressing something to God. It's addressing God. Okay, so it's directional. We're, we're praying to God. And then he says, praying always with prayer and supplication. Well, that's a different word. 
And a supplication is where you make a specific request. It's, I have very something very specific that I'm asking for. It's almost the idea that, think of you're going before a king and you are asking something from him. I don't know if you've ever met anybody really important, uh, like a former president or a current president. What did you say to that guy? What do you say to a guy? I, mean, I remember meeting Jimmy Carter. And I was thinking, man, you're really short. But that's not what I said. I mean, what do you say to Jimmy Carter? Hey, Jimmy, how are you doing? I watch you on TV a lot. I mean, if you're going before a king, you better have something to say. You better have something to ask for. That's a supplication, something very specific. I'm going to ask, make a specific request. So Paul says when you pray, and you're praying always, every time you pray, you're going to God with specific things. Notice he adds in there, in the Spirit. He said, what does he mean by that? Praying always, every time you pray, pray in the Spirit. What does that mean? Somebody give me an idea. What do you think that means? According to God's will. Why would being praying in the Spirit be praying according to God's will? Okay, the Holy Spirit is God and... Yeah, I mean, we read in 1 Corinthians 2 that who knows the mind of the Lord but the Spirit of God. Okay, just as the Spirit of man within us knows what's going on inside of us, the Spirit knows what God is doing. And so you're praying consistent with God's will. But where I want to focus then is that next phrase, watching thereunto with all perseverance. Now that word perseverance is essentially, it's a different form, essentially the word that we saw continuing instant, constantly devoted, steadfastly attentive to. Okay, So he's reminding of, this, of that again, but he adds something else. He says, watching thereunto or being vigilant about. The word literally means to stay awake. To have insomnia, to lie sleeplessly, um, to keep on the alert is the idea here. So we're, our prayerfulness is not only something that we constantly do, but there's a manner in which we go about it. And that is a vigilant way, in a vigilant way or a, an attentive way. The, the next passage has the same theme. Colossians 4.2 says, continue in prayer. And watch in the same with thanksgiving. And Paul is saying almost the identical thing there. Continue in prayer. The continue is that constant, devoted, steadfast attention to word. And watch in the same. Different word in in the original language, but means essentially the same thing as being alert, being vigilant. Something that you're attentive to. Um, Something that you're literally staying awake. I don't know. If this happens a lot, it happens a lot in Georgia. I don't know if it happens a lot here. We get morning fog. Have you ever driven your car on an extremely foggy morning? It's different than driving in fog at night because at fog at night you have a little bit of you have a better chance of seeing taillights. Fog in the morning is bad because you just can't see anything. How do you drive when you're in the midst of that fog? Do you have the radio blaring? You know, you're on your phone, one hand in the steering wheel. No. You probably have the radio off, the phone is in your pocket, and you're white knuckling it with both hands. And your eyeballs are ready to pop out of your head, right? Because you're straining with every ounce to see whether there's some car in front of you that's already stopped. Especially like if you're on the interstate and you're busting along at 70 miles an hour, which you're probably not. You're probably pulled way back to like 50 or maybe 45 on the interstate because you're straining to see. You are as alert as you can possibly be. Watch there there unto. Be alert in. Don't fall asleep in. Be vigilant about your prayer life. Okay, so we have constant. If you're writing it down, there's going to be three words. They're all C's. They have to be C's, right? Constant. I had to stretch this one a little bit. Conscientious. Or if you want to put in parentheses, just vigilant. Vigilance in prayer, conscientious in prayer. You're you're alert to it. It's something that is presently on your mind. And then really the third concept that we see, we find in two texts. The other last two texts we haven't looked at yet. Philippians 4, 6. Philippians 4, 6 says, Be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication. There are those two words again. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. But in everything... And so here Paul points us to really the breadth of issues to it about which we pray. I mean, what does everything mean? Any, all, whole, everything, all things, everything. That's what it means from the lexicon, if that helps you. It means everything. My pastor in Atlanta used to say all means all, and that's all all means. 
He probably got that from somebody. He doubt, I doubt he made that one up, but it means everything. It means that when we pray, the breadth of which we pray about is everything. We could throw in the fifth passage, as I would add, is 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, pray without ceasing. And that doesn't mean that every word out of my mouth is a prayer. It means that the attitude is such that in every circumstance, my first response is to speak to the Lord about it. I don't mean tacky. I've seen people, let's pray right here, you know, in a kind of a showy way. I mean, that's, that's kind of the world we live in. Everything you do, you tweet about it, right? I mean, the first thing you do when you have some kind of a thing, you put it on Facebook, or you're, you're tweeting about it, or you're text messaging about it. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Others, it's not a bad thing to tweet. I'll tell you how to do it if you'd like to. It's actually somewhat useful um, at times. It's very useful to keep up with your college students. Very useful for that. Of course, now I've just eliminated myself from ever getting another tweet ever. Um, from college students, particularly certain college students. But the idea here is that my first response in the attitude of my heart is when something I'm going through, my first thought, my first inclination is I'm going to express it to the Lord, pray to the Lord. And so in this particular word, I just chose comprehensive so I could have three C's. So constant, conscientious, and comprehensive. In other words, I am Devoted to prayer, it is a huge part of who I am. Not a sidelight. In other words, there's not very many moms here that have had infants that they took care of the baby when they got around to it. Right? I'm looking around at some of you that have young ones. Is that the way it is? No. It's not when you get around to it. It's kind of like our little dachshund when she's hungry. It's not get around to it. It's get down there and feed her or you're going to have to listen to her whine for the next hour. And the same with little babies. You you don't just... It's something you're devoted to. And prayer is not something you should just wait till you get around to it. It's something that should be a constant devotion, something you give careful attention to. And then you're alert about it. As you're going through the, the day, you're alert to that. And your first inclination is to pray for something. There's not... You know, there's not these little things that you can deal with and the big things you bring to God. You should be constantly in an attitude where... I'm ready to pray. That means something, too. It means that in my own walk with the Lord is such that I, uh, I have that relationship. I mean, have you ever had another person where you're kind of at odds with that person? Maybe a spouse? Maybe a spouse. Um, I know none of you guys have that problem because you're here on Wednesday nights. All the people that didn't come tonight that have problems with their spouses, I understand that. I, that's just how it works, right? Um, but... I, have you ever had a situation with your spouse where you wanted to call for him or her up, but you were had a spat that morning and you weren't going to call her or him, as the case may be, or another friend? If you don't, if you're not married, maybe you have a friend that way that you're kind of at odds, and so you might have called them, but you didn't because of the the separation that was there. See, that means your relationship with the Lord needs to be such that you can, can I say, pick up the phone. And call. See, uh, here's a joke. Y'all are getting really tired. In the South, when you call the Lord, it's a, it's a local call. Up here, it's long distance. <laughs> Y'all get that tomorrow. Seriously, seriously, though, we need to be in a position with our relationship with God where we can... Did I say that right, dear? My family doesn't like it when I tell jokes. They say I am not a good joke teller. I guess y'all can be the judge of, judge of that. Y'all can send me emails about that. Maybe y'all can send me joke emails and then I would be a good joke teller. Anyway, don't bother. Um, and this is true. Okay, yes, I revoked that request. Okay, I don't really need joke emails. So I, uh, thank you. Anyway, um, the point is we need to be able to be in a situation where our prayer life is I'm constantly going to the Lord in prayer. And my first reaction when my day hits a snag is not to fret and fuss and yell and complain, but turn right around to the Lord and say, Lord, you knew this was in this day. Please help me with this. Lord, give me the wisdom to respond to this scenario that just walked in my door. How many of you have that? Stuff walks in your door and you're like, oh my, what am I going to do? We all do. No matter what you do, your day is like that. Whether you're a college student here tonight or whether 
you're a retired person here tonight. We all have things that come into our lives every single day where we try to tackle them ourselves. And quite frankly, if we're going to have the right kind of prayer life, these five verses really lay it out. Paul, in at least three of them, says, be continually, attentively, devoted to prayer. So it's a big part of who we are. And when we pray, we can pray about everything. Everything goes to God in prayer. It's comprehensive. And it's something I am vigilant about. I'm, I'm, I'm watching for an opportunity to bring something to the Lord. That shouldn't be a weird thing for us, right? It shouldn't be something where I have to get into this mode where I'm thinking, okay, I've got to pray now. It should just be as easy as speaking to your best friend. Lord, I, I could use some help on this right now. And not every prayer is five words long. We should have times of prayer that are more extended, but Lord knows what we need. And that simple expression, Lord, I need your wisdom right now for this issue, expresses what? Expresses humility, expresses dependence, and it's promised that God's going to give grace for that. And so in Paul's five imperative statements on how to pray, I would ask you, what does your prayer life look like? Could your prayer life be described as something that's constant? Something that you give steadfast attention to? You know, we're going to have, theoretically, over the next week or two, some downtime. It's not going to be as hectic for you, perhaps it'll be more hectic, I don't know. For some of us, it may be more hectic. But we're not going to be in our normal schedule. We're going to be on a little different schedule. And so I would challenge you to not waste this time. And I know it's going to be busy. We're going to be spread all over South Carolina a little bit, so I know how that is. But in those times that you do have some time to think, evaluate your prayer life. Is it something that you're steadfastly devoted to? Are there other things in your life that you give more attention to? If we were able to just follow you around with a silent camera, could we go, wow, that, that man, that woman, really, their prayer life, wow, amazing. Or would it be a very short clip? I think we would all say, my guess is we all would say, we need, we need help. We need to look at that. Are you alert in prayer? Are you conscientious about it? Or does praying really rarely cross your mind? You tackle everything yourself. I got it covered. Lord, I got it. So I've got it taken care of. And then do you have that perpetual attitude where you're ready to pray? And you have that relationship. I trust you'll take some time in these days of a different schedule to just think about it. Or what can I do in 2012 to have a more vibrant prayer life? What Paul says about our prayer life is very clear, very succinct. Very succinct. In his commands to us. And I trust that as you look at your life, you say, you know what, Lord, I'm going to commit to that. I'm going to commit to being more alert in prayer. And as things come out throughout the day, I'm going to pray about it. It may not be a, you know, an hour-long time on my knees, but it will be a time where I can say, Lord, I need your help with this. And express your dependence on him.